Hey, Paul, what do you got going on over here? It looks like a very complicated mess. Yeah, if you've been watching the Handy Guys, you know that back here we usually have a sheet to cover up all of this material. It's actually organized, Brian, not a mess. Up next, we're going to show you how to organize your high-tech home. So what is all this stuff, Paul? All right, Brian, well, every home nowadays has a lot of cables coming in and out of the home. They have things like cable. So you have a cable connection, or maybe you have Fios or something like that for internet and TV. Um, you also have things like voice over IP. Uh, so you may be through That's your cable your or yeah, telephone. Through the internet. Um, or uh, so what I've done is I don't have all those through one provider. So a lot of people have just Fios, just cable or whatever. I only have cable TV for uh, internet. I don't even have it for TV. I just have their internet package, and that's what this router is for. So what, what I like to do with all of this different equipment is to try to organize it. And it used to be that uh, you had both electrical panels like I have here, and uh, some companies were trying to sell panels for low voltage equipment like this. I think they called it structured wiring for the home or something like that. But that, that was an ad added expense. But what you can do to organize your cables is simply get a piece of plywood, get it up on the wall, get a big piece of plywood, the bigger the better, and then you can organize all your different devices. And I'll explain what all of these are. But notice, I not only have routers, ethernet switches, uh, this is a TV tuner here, this is a router for just my voice provider, but I also have a little shelf at the bottom, which is very convenient because I can put a UPS for this equipment and sit it there and also other power supplies and such. Here, simply a cable modem, that's all it does. It handles my internet traffic um, and it comes through on this cable. No splitters are involved. It's a gr good solid signal for my e uh, internet. Coming out of that, I have an ethernet connection that runs um, ultimately to a router which is not up here on the wall. I have it in a different location for reasons uh, of having the Handy Guy studio here and I don't want any noise or extra activity. But it ultimately goes into this central switch. This is an ethernet switch. This is where all of my wired connections are routed. Why do I have so many wired connections? Well, one of them goes to a wireless access point, which instead of leaving down here in the basement, I put in the middle of the house. So I only need one wireless access point and it gives a strong signal to everyone in the house. And then this HDTV box is very nifty. I love this. All this is is a tuner so that I can take what ultimately, if you start at the top, is a wire that comes down from my attic. So I took the cabling that was already in my house and instead of routing it to cable, I hooked an antenna up to it up in the attic and a tr traditional antenna which we've covered before uh, in how to get a high quality HD TV through an antenna and it routes down through here to a splitter. One of them goes directly to a TV in our family room. The other side of the splitter comes down to this tuner and this allows me to uh, receive those channels and use a DVR to then stream. It takes uh, the channels and it streams it to the DVR as a tuner and an HD video to my Myth TV. Uh, it's a computer that I run at my home brew essentially digital uh, video recorder on and it receives it from this. And then what's this this thing over here? Yeah, so there's so many wireless signals in the neighborhood, so many homes that have wireless because they're all young families and everyone was using wireless that a lot of the, uh, the, the reliability was low. So a lot of people are competing for the same channels and so forth. So I installed wired connectivity throughout the house, at least to important areas so that, for instance, those that are working at home could have a wired connection, wouldn't have to worry about the wireless being having any Right, and our editing like suites all on hardwired right. and so, all of that. Right, right. And as we expanded as the handy guys, we wanted exactly. So editing uh, suite, high speed, we wanted at least gigabit in Ethernet. So we had to use wired instead of wireless. Of course, the wireless now is starting to catch up in some ways. So we needed this. This is so we have, we have jacks around the house, sort of like this one here, if you can see it. Um, where I put them in the walls. This one's just surface mounted. They all come back to the back of this punch down block. And then from here, I route it to my ethernet switch. So this is just a punch down block. You can buy at Newegg or something like that, Amazon. It's not expensive. And you need a punch down tool. You bring your connections in there. So that's pretty simple. Um, and we have another video that talks a little bit more about ethernet. But the key is to try to organize it so that you can troubleshoot this is a simple way of doing it. It's not how you would do it in a professional business or something like that. But for the home, it works out well. It has everything sorted out. I, you know, if I was a little bit more organized, I would label everything. 
but uh, it's worked out for me and it's been set up like this for probably five, six, seven years. Well, good. Now we're revealing what's behind the curtain <laughs> at the Handy Guys. Yeah, so please don't pay attention to this messy corner of the universe <laughs> when we do our podcast. Hopefully this is helpful for you, give you some ideas on how you can organize your high-tech home. Thanks for watching. We're the Handy Guys. Thanks.